cada sé cuándo es cinta, cinta negra, sí. Hi teacher, good evening. Good evening. Hi teacher. Hello. <clears throat> okay, we are going to start another session and, and this is the second uh, session of the week number three. We are almost, almost done with this week. We are going to have two more sessions. And then the next week is the last one of this module. So we are going, to, we are almost done with this module. So we are going to begin with the topic that we are going to develop today because uh, yesterday was like the last day of the topic of the geography vocabulary and now we are going to begin with another topic i know that maybe this topic is not like something that you don't know because uh, it's related to adjectives and i know that adjectives is a kind of easy topic because it's related to words that uh, function as describing something or giving more information about something or someone But in this case, we are going to talk about the comparative and superlative adjectives. So we are going to talk about what are the comparative adjectives. We are going to talk about what are the superlative adjectives. How can we create those adjectives? What are the uh, words that we can use for uh, the comparative and for the superlative? Also, we are going to see what are the one syllable adjectives, two syllable adjectives, and long adjectives. And also we are going to have a lot of examples and we are going to have some exercises. So we are going to begin with that topic that it is not really complicated at all. So we are going just to see what are the elements that we need for that information. So. We are going to begin with the topic for today's session. Let's see. But let me move this one. Because I like to have this. Like this, okay. Comparative and superlative. What is the first thing that we need to, to know or to remember about the adjectives? First, we need to, to remember that adjectives are words that describe, identify, or quantify nouns and also pronouns. They help specify our reading by offering more details about nouns and pronouns. So in that case, that is a part of a speech. It's a group of words that we can use to um, give more information about the things that we are describing and the things that we are explaining. If we are talking about a place, we can add the adjectives, we can uh, use adjectives that can give more details about that situation and we can make the people that is listening or the people that is reading something can imagine that um, place too because we are giving details so in that case this adjective has that function but i'm going to write the general information about the adjective Teacher, estigo claro. Claro. Ah, claro. But uh, in this case, it's not like the internet is my computer that likes to make some jokes when we are working because she is saying, it is not possible that you are working well today. So <laughs> I don't know. It's maybe a, a problem of the computer too. So it is not just the, the connection because it was working well and then she said 
No, no, no. It is not possible. So we are going to continue. Hoping that she is going to work well. So we are going to continue with that part because we are we're, uh, like seeing the description of the adjectives. And it says that they help to specify our reading by offering more details. about the nouns and pronouns. So that's like the review that we have or the general idea that we have about the adjectives because we are going to have like just this description, but we are going to see what are the comparative and superlative form of the adjectives. And we know that we have a lot of words that we can use as an adjective. We have the numbers, we have the colors, we have a specific word for um, shape. We have a specific word for um, the structure of something. Uh, we have like a lot of words, but in this case, we are going to see how to construct or how to use these adjectives to make a comparison between two things, or we have like the superlative part in which we are saying that someone or something is the top of the top. So we are going to begin with the comparative adjectives. We are going to see what are the comparative adjectives and what is the uh, use that we can give to these kind of, of adjectives. And also we are going to see some examples. So we have that the comparative adjectives are used to compare two things. They help describe difference between two nouns. So in this case, we are going to use it to describe something about two different things. El nombre mismo nos dice que es una comparación. The comparative adjectives nos va a ayudar a nosotros a hacer una comparación entre dos cosas. En este caso, dos nombres. Pero en este caso no es como que uno es más que el otro, sino una mera comparación. And as with the other uh, tenses or uh, structures, uh, we have a formula for this kind of adjectives. We are going to use these, um, like these structures to make better or to make easier in the way in which we write these kind of sentences. So for the formula we have, first the noun or the subject, Then we have the verb. Then we have the comparative adjective. Then we are going to use than. And we are going to have a noun, another noun. I mean, noun that is going to function as an object. 
Vamos a tener un nombre que va a ser el sujeto de nuestra oración. Vamos a tener un verbo, un adjetivo comparativo, el dan, que siempre va a ir en esa, en esa estructura, y otro nombre que va a funcionar como objeto de nuestra oración. But we are going to see an example. And we have the first noun that we are going to use for this sentence is my television. Then I'm going to write the verb that in this case I'm going to use the verb to be. My television is, and I'm going to use a, a comparative adjective. In this case, I'm going to use the adjective big. But in this case, it is going to be different from that base form. Bigger. And we have done my computer. That is the object. En esa oración yo estoy comparando a mi televisor con mi computadora. Y estoy diciendo que el televisor es más grande que la computadora pero no estamos diciendo que es el más grande de todos, ¿no? Que es más grande que la computadora. So, that is the uh, structure and we are going to find a lot of uh, sentences like this one when we are talking about the comparative adjectives. And we are going to compare two different things. En este caso, sí, tiene que ser la comparación de dos cosas. But in some cases... The sentence will end after the comparative adjective and not include the object of comparison. This structure is possible when the context has provided enough information to make the comparison clear. You know that we are learning this kind of structures and they are very, very formal because we, uh, when we speak, we try to use this kind of structures and we use these rules. But you know that when we are speaking, there are a, a lot of different situations that we are like uh, living in that moment. So we have another option that we can give information. We are talking about a situation, someone or a place, and we have like a lot of information about that uh, place or about that person, and we are not going to have the same structure for the sentence. Cuando nosotros hablamos, damos mucha información eh, sobre una cosa, sobre las personas. En el caso de que nosotros ya hayamos dado mucha información, no es necesario que sigamos esta estructura, pero ya les voy a mostrar cómo quedarían esas estructuras cuando ya hemos dado mucha información. So, let me write the, uh, the, the, idea, the general idea about the uh, extra information that we can give when we are talking.
So in that case, we have that the context has provided enough information. Ya el mismo contexto nos está dando la información que necesitamos para nuestra oración. And we have the example. And it says, my brother is six feet tall, but my father is taller. My brother is six feet tall, but my father is taller. So we're talking about my brother that is six feet tall. And then we say, but my father is taller. Si nosotros separamos esa oración y hacemos que esta no exista en ese momento, this one. And we say, my father is taller. Mi padre es más alto que quién. Your brother. Good. In this case, we can write, if we don't have the information about my brother, I can say, but my father is taller than my brother. Estoy hablando de que mi papá es más alto que mi hermano. Pero como yo ya dije que mi hermano tiene una cierta altura, ya no necesito agregarlo después. Porque ustedes ya saben cuánto mide mi hermano. Ya les dije cuánto mide mi hermano y solo estoy aclarando que my father is taller than him. So it is not necessary to add again the same information. So in those cases, when you have provide enough information about the thing that you are explaining it is not necessary that you write again or you say it again the information because it's going to be kind of weird that we say ah my brother is six feet tall but my my father is taller than my brother because it's going to sound like what but you were talking about your brother and why are you talking again about your brother so in that case you are going to end the sentence after the comparative adjective. En ese caso, vamos a terminar nuestra oración justo donde queda el adjetivo. Ya no vamos a poner nada más después de él. So, now, we're going to see what are the superlative. Vamos a ver solo la información general de ambos, del comparative and el superlative. Because then we are going to talk about the different kind of adjectives that we have. In this case, we are going to talk about the one syllable adjectives, two syllable adjectives, and also the long adjectives because they function in a different way. But we are going to see what are the superlative. So it says that the superlative adjectives are used to compare three or more things and they help describe things on either end of a spectrum. For example, smallest and largest, tallest and shortest. En este caso, el superlativo nos va a ayudar a comparar tres cosas o más que están dentro, o en este caso, Yeah. Sí, puede ser como fuera del espectro, pero en este caso es como el más pequeño, el más grande, el más alto o el más corto. So in that case, we are going like to find what a thing is the top of the things. ¿Cuál es el que nadie supera? En lo que sea que estemos hablando, nadie lo supera. Es el que se lleva el primer lugar de la descripción.
Now we are going to see an example, or I mean, we are going to see first the structure and then the example. So for the structure is like almost the same of the uh, comparative adjective. So in this case, we are going to change a little bit of the things because we are going not to use than. In this case, we are going to use the. So we have the noun that is the subject. Then we have the verb. And here we have the superlative adjective. And we have the noun that is the object. And now we are going to see the example. My English professor, that is the first noun, my English professor. My English professor is the smartest, is the smartest person. Mi profesor de inglés es la persona más inteligente. Es el más inteligente de todos. In that case, that is the function of the superlative um, adjectives. To say that someone or something is the best, the worst, the smallest, the smartest, or something like that. And in some cases, it is not necessary to have the, um, the object as in the comparative sentence. In this case, it is not necessary to add all that information. And we have another example. We took an exam in class today. That is the information that I am giving to you. We took an exam in class today and I scored the highest and I scored the highest. Tuvimos un examen en clases y yo saqué la mayor puntuación. Fui la número uno con la puntuación más alta. ¿De qué? ¿De qué les estaba hablando yo? Del examen. So in that case, I'm not going to use the information because I was saying that information first and then I add the other thing. So in that case, we are going to have a second example. So after that general information about the comparative and the superlative, we are going to see how can we create that uh, kind of adjective. Vamos a ver cómo se crean estos adjetivos because we know that we have a lot of adjectives and we have seen a lot of these words, but now we are going to transform those words. We are going to add something at the end or we are going to add something at the beginning and we are going to transform into a comparative and superlative. So we are going to uh, see what is the creation or how can we create? It says that changing an adjective into its comparative form or its superlative form depends on the number of syllables in the base form of the adjective. Vamos a ver cuáles son o oh, eh, el número de sílabas que tiene cada uno de estos adjetivos. Vamos a ver, más o menos, vamos a recordar nuestros tiempos de estudiante cuando estudiábamos en lenguaje. 
y contábamos las sílabas de las palabras. So we are going to see what are the number of syllables that this um, adjective has. And we are going to divide it into um, different categories. So we are going to begin with the general information and then with the one syllable adjectives. One syllable adjectives. So we have the first one and that is one syllable adjectives and we are going to add at the end the suffix er and est for the superlative adjective. So for, for the comparative adjectives, we are going to add er at the end of the adjective and for the superlative, we are going to use or to add est at the end. When the adjective has a single vowel between two consonants, the second consonant will be double. Para los comparativos, vamos a agregarle ER e al final, la E y la R. Para los superlativos, vamos a agregarle EST. Y cuando tengamos eh, adjetivos que lleven una consonante, una vocal y una consonante, Vamos a doblar, o sea, escribir dos veces la última consonante y agregar el sufijo. But I'm going to write the information and then we are going to have examples.
Okay, we are going to have like an example for this. N is a one syllable adjective that also has a consonant, a vowel, and a consonant. And the word is hot. This is the adjective. We know that in Spanish, this is caliente. So we are going to have this um, adjective and we are going to transform into a comparative form because we're going to double the consonant. We're going to see how it is going to be in a comparative form. So in this case, it says that we have the word and we are going to double the consonant and also we are going to add ER, hot, hotter. And we have an example with that adjective. The, the temperature is hotter today than yesterday. Is hotter today than yesterday. And we have the first example. Now, we are going to have five adjectives, uh, five one syllable adjectives, and we are going to make the comparative form and also the superlative form. Tell me, Irma. Y si, y si fuera en superlativo, siempre se le agregaría la, do, la doble T y EST. Exactamente, así mismo. Siempre okay. se va a doblar porque cuando ya tenemos una consonante, una vocal y una consonante siempre se doble y se le agregan los finales. Ok, gracias. You're welcome. So, we are going to see the example. Teacher, y sería of... una sílaba nada más. Sí, una sola sílaba siempre. Ok. Mm -hmm. Because in, this, in that case it's not like it's going to uh, count the change because you are just writing the, the superlative and the comparative but the adjective also is one syllable, even if you add the suffix. So in that case, it is not like, we are going to change that. So we're going to have five adjectives that are one syllable adjectives, and we are going to make it comparative and superlative. So we are going to have like a table in which we are going to see the um, construction of those adjectives and the changes. So we are going to see how it's going to change those adjectives. Vamos a ver los cambios que tienen los adjetivos tanto en superlativo como en comparativo. So, let's see. So we have five words, fast, cheap, fresh, big, and sad. So we are going to write the comparative form of these adjectives because we have like three in which we are just going to add the ER and we have two that we are going to double the consonant and we are going to add the ER. And in the superlative, we are going to add EST to three of these. And the last two, we are going to double the consonant and add the EST. So let's see what are the changes.
So there we have the adjectives in the comparative and in the superlative form. We have fast, faster, and fastest. Cheap, cheaper, cheapest. Fresh, fresher, freshest. Big, uh, bigger, biggest. Sun, southern, and saddest. So in that case, we have like the change that we can make with this kind of adjectives. So in that case, we have like adding just the suffix. En este caso, cuando tenemos este tipo de adjetivos, solo le vamos a agregar los finales. But you are going to see that when we have like very long adjectives, we are going to add something at the beginning, not just at the end. So in this case, we have these ones but we are going to make some examples later because now we are just going to see the general information and then we are going to see the examples. And also we are going to have some exercises. So don't worry for that. And we are going to see the next one that is two syllable adjectives. We already see that we have the one syllable adjectives and now we are going to see two syllable adjectives and what are the changes that we can make for those adjectives. So let's see. Number two, two syllable adjectives. So in this case, for comparative adjectives, the suffix er will be add is the same er at the end, or it will be preceded by more. So here we have a different thing. We are going to write more than we are going to write the adjective. For a superlative adjective, the suffix est will be add or it will be preceded by must. Must at the beginning, then the adjective. And sometimes both forms are used, but one will be more common. When in doubt, use more or most instead of a suffix. If we are not like, uh, secure about the adjective that we are using, we can add most and more, and we are not going to change the suffix in the adjective. And for example, adjectives ending in Y, the Y will become an E, and the appropriate suffix will be add. So, en ese tipo de adjetivos, vamos a cambiar la Y, Sí, digamos Y al final y le vamos a cambiar por una I. ¿Cómo hacemos con otros, eh, con otros tantos, verdad? Tanto en los verbos pasa eso de los cambios. Así que si tenemos eh, verbo, eh, I mean, adjetivos que terminen en Y, los cambiamos por una I y le agregamos el sufijo que lleva. En el caso de que no sepamos exactamente cuál es el sufijo que lleva el adjetivo, le vamos a agregar most o more, dependiendo de qué función tenga. Si es comparativo, es more. Si es superlativo, must.
So we are going to have like another table in which we are going to see these changes that we can make for this kind of uh, adjectives. Because in this case, it's going to be like mm, bigger or large uh, adjective because in this case, they are two syllable adjectives. So we are going to have, again, like the adjective, the base form of the adjective. Then we are going to have the comparative form and then the superlative form. So we are going to have like the table in which we are going, uh, going to write the example. So we're going to see. So here we have the examples and we have the first one that is gentle, then we have clumsy, then we have happy, anxious and polite. So in this case, we can see that they are like a kind of a little bit bigger because in that case, it's not like long words but they have like um, two syllable. In this case, there are two syllable uh, words. So in this case, we're going to add uh, the endings. In this case, we're going to have two words that are like in, in this case, we're not going to use the endings because we're going to use most and more. So let me see. We have the one, two, and three, we are going to add the, the suffix. And in the number four and five, we are going to use more and most. So for the comparative. So here we have the examples. We have gentle, gentler, and gentlest. Clumsy, clumsier, and clumsiest. Happy, happier, and happiest. Anxious, more anxious, or most anxious. Polite, more polite, and most polite. So in that case, we can see that in the last two words, they are kind of longer than the others. Um, we are going to add more and must. And in the three syllable adjectives or three syllable or more adjectives, we are not going to add endings. In this case, we are just going to use more and must. Cuando tenemos palabras más largas, eh, no, ya no le vamos a agregar los eh, finales, los suffix. En ese caso, siempre vamos a utilizar must and more. So, vamos a tener algunos ejemplos más abajo de las three or more syllable adjectives in which we are not going to use the endings. 
we are just going to use more and most. So I'm going to write the example of those um, three or more syllables. So here we have the examples and you can see that they are like longer words. So in that case, you're just going to add more and most. I have a document or PDF document in which I have a long list of adjectives and it's comparative and superlative form. I will share that document with you. I will send to the group because I don't remember if the, the document has like 10, nine or more pages, but it is kind of long, but it's a long list of adjectives. So in that um, document, you can see all the adjectives that we can use and how can we transform those adjectives into a comparative and superlative. So in that case, we have three. In this case, I didn't uh, put the number three here. So we have three different categories in this case that are the basic categories. The number one is the one syllable adjectives, the two syllable adjectives, and the three or more syllables. But also we have the irregular adjective and exception. You know that in some cases, when we are talking in English, we think that we have like, rules, several rules for um, some structure, but in some cases we have some exceptions because maybe we can use it in another way. So adjectives is not like the one uh, topic that don't have exceptions. So we have some exception here too. And also there are several rules for reading in English. These rules often have irregularities and exceptions. Sometimes the deviants follow a pattern and that makes them easy to spot, but this is not the case for comparative and superlative adjectives. Abnormal adjectives simply have to be committed to memory. We have the irregular adjectives in this case that it says that adjectives are irregular when their comparative and superlative form do not adhere to the rules discussed in this, uh, in this kind of topics. And they are like the, uh, the verbs. We have like the, the regular verbs that you know, we are just going to add ed at the end of the verb. And we have the irregular verbs in which we change the form of the verb. So the same thing happens with the adjectives. We have some adjectives that change their form. So for that reason, they are irregular adjectives because they don't remain the same. Tenemos ver, eh, adjetivos irregulares que al igual que los verbos cambian totalmente su forma. No se quedan así como estos que ya explicamos, que se le agrega la ER, la EST, o que se les pone more and most. En este caso, cambian cuando son 
eh, comparativos y superlativos y son diferentes de la forma original. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos de esos irregular adjectives. And maybe you can see, ah, that is an irregular adjective because I know what it, that um, adjective means. So we are going to have one, two, three, four, five. Five examples of irregular adjectives. We are going to have the base form of the adjective and then we are going to see the changes that they have. So we have here five uh, adjectives, good, bad, little, much, and far. In the last one, you can see that it's a one syllable adjective, but in this case, when we are going to write it in comparative and superlative, it's going to be a long word. Far will become a long word. So we are going to see what are the comparative of these ones. So we have for good, we have better. And for superlative, we have best. They are totally different from the base form. Son totalmente diferentes. Then we have for bad, we have worse. Teacher, son no. diferentes, pero que es el mismo significado. Exactamente. Solo que, como en el caso del comparativo, estamos comparando dos cosas. My TV is better than yours. Mi televisión es mejor que la tuya. Y en la mm. otra, she is the best. Ella es la mejor. Nadie se le compara. Pero se refiere como a la misma situación, pero no es como exactamente el mismo significado, porque good es bueno. Es, sería dependiendo del complemento. Exactamente. Sería eh, eh, dependiendo de qué es lo que estamos haciendo con esa palabra. Porque en una comparamos y en la otra superamos. Pero no es exactamente como decir bueno, buenísimo y más bueno, sino mm -hmm. el mejor y el, el, el que nadie lo sabe. Ah, eh, uh -huh. ah, ok. Perfecto. Thank you. Then, you're welcome. We have little and we have less. That in this case is como menos. Little es pequeño o un poco. And in this case, less es menos. And least least. Then we have much, that in this case is more, and most. And in this one, the long word, farther and further. Farther, I mean, not farther, farther. And further. It's completely different. And in superlative is very, very long because we are going to use like the EST for this, um, for this word. So it's completely, completely different. And this one is farthest. And for this. So in this case, we have the irregular um, adjectives as in the verbs. Así como lo pueden ver en los verbos, también lo tenemos en los adjetivos, que son los, eh, cómo cambia la forma, ¿verdad? De esas palabras para poder eh, darle un significado nuevo. En ese caso es como decir, uh, es lo mejor que tenemos o es lo peor que tenemos pero en este caso cambia la forma en la que escribimos is related to the base of the adjective 
but the written form is completely different. And for the exceptions, uh, it says that um, in some cases, it's not like they change in the way or they don't have a comparative and superlative form. Las excepciones son aquellos que no se apegan a las reglas. Y hay algunos que no tienen esa forma superlativa y esa forma comparativa. Y podemos eh, ver en, en esos los ejemplos de blind, unique, vertical, round, left, intelligent. But intelligent we can use with mass intelligent or more intelligent. But they don't change a little bit. And complete and perfect. They don't have like a change in the ear form. So in that case, they are exceptions. So tomorrow we are going to continue with this topic. We are going to see examples of these adjectives. And also we are going to have some activities in which we are going to put into practice the information about the comparative and superlative form of the adjectives. And I'm going to send to you the list of the adjective because I have the, the PDF document in which you are going to find all the adjectives that you need when you are talking in English. So we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow. So have a really good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night, guys. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night.